welcome to InfoHub. In our headlines, Minister of Business Dominic Gaskin says 2018 budget is people-based as budget debates begin. Minister of Public Telecommunications observes that the country's youth are now better prepared for leadership roles. Ghana gears up to litigate the validity of the 1899 Arbitral Award, which delineated the Ghana-Venezuela border. Twelve-member team from Martinique and Guadeloupe here on trade mission, and District 10 retains the nationals title. Stay tuned for the details of these and more. As Guyanese citizens who live in Guyana, we have duties to perform for the benefit of our families, communities, and ourselves. Some of those duties are legal, like obeying the laws of Guyana, and others are voluntary, like keeping our surroundings clean or voting. One legal duty that citizens have which contributes to the national budget is paying your taxes. But you can be of greater help to your country and government agencies by paying attention to how public services are being delivered and asking questions if you have any concerns. The budget is everyone's business. Get involved now. A message from the Ministry of Finance. And now for the details. Minister of Business Dominic Gaskin says 2018 budget is people-based as budget debates begin. Tiffany Rodias has the details. Minister Dominic Gaskin and Opposition Member of Parliament Ifran Ali kicked off the debates for Budget 2018. Budget 2018 is a, is a good-natured budget. It has a certain benevolence about it. It is a people-focused budget. It is a budget that speaks to the man in the street. And it says to him that when this government is spending taxpayers' money, that he or she is going to be the beneficiary of that spending. Minister Gaskin noted the budget is a clear commitment to Guyanese who are looking to enjoy their share in the good life. If we look at the personal income tax allowance, the $720,000 per year, now the man who works for half a year and as a result would normally be entitled to deduct only half of the annual allowance from his earnings, can now deduct the entire allowance. Now this will allow persons who are laid off and unable to find another job in the short term to at least get back some of the taxes that they would have paid during the previous year. The minister noted this and other measures clearly disproves Member of Parliament Ali's claims that there is nothing in the 2018 budget for the ordinary man. The government and opposition will spend the next four days debating the 2018 budget before they move to the consideration of the estimates. For InfoHub, Tiffany Rogers. Continuing the debate, Minister within the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs, Valerie Garrido Lowe, says the budget reflects the government's careful management of the people's resources. Seneca Thorne has more. We would like our Guyanese brothers and sisters to know that we understand that they have given us the opportunity to be in this position of trust so that we could be able to make the decisions that would better serve them. And we are doing just that, Mr. Speaker. For the past two and a half years, we have been making the soft and the hard decisions, all in the interests of the Guyanese people, spread across the 10 regions of this beautiful country. Minister Gridelo said that the government believes that the country is long overdue for the establishment of a strong foundation. She said Budget 2018 will lay the foundation not only for today's generation, but the future generation as well. The journey to the good life continues is without doubt a fit and proper budget. <laughs> budget 2018 reflects your government's careful and caring management of our people's resources which we are responsible for. In closing, Minister Gridelow acknowledged the hard work of the various ministries, which ensured that Guyanese across the country benefit fairly from the country's resources. Seneca Thorne for InfoHub. Guyana gears up to litigate the validity of the 1899 Arbitral Award, which delineated the Guyana-Venezuela border. Tiffany joins us again with that story. Minister Carl Granit said the recent exercise to identify the markers demarcating the boundary between Guyana and Venezuela is important as Guyana prepares its case for the International Court of Justice. It is important to maintain the markers because you don't want people moving them and then shifting them into Guyana so that Venezuela can claim even more territory. 
than is currently the case. Guyana is awaiting the decision from the United Nations Secretary General now that his personal representative has concluded mediations between the two neighboring countries. Minister Granit said Guyana has increased its bilaterals with other countries to ensure the Secretary General carries out his obligations. The obligations are he must refer the matter to the court at the end of 2017 unless there is significant progress in resolving the matter. What is it he has to resolve? Whether or not the decision of 1899 is null and void. That is the decision. Not whether Venezuela should get a piece more land. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs kicked off a sensitization campaign on the Guyana Venezuela controversy in Region 6 on Sunday. The minister will be visiting other communities to update them on the controversy and it's important to them as Guyanese. For Info Hub, Tiffany Rogers. During the unveiling of the Ghana Chronicle newspaper's Elimination of Violence Against Women banner on Saturday, Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu reiterated that relationships must be grounded on respect and equality, not violence. Details from Paul McAdam. The Prime Minister made the pronouncement at the event which was part of the 16 days of activism to eradicate gender-based violence. He called on society to use the opportunity to examine societal values and beliefs that support violence. Relationship is based on respect. Relationship is based on equality. The notion that you are no greater than your, your female counterpart. It may be said that they are the fairer sex, but they are stronger, they are better, they are smarter. And in fact, they are creators. Without our women, there would be no universe. There will be no humanity. The Prime Minister said that men needed to re-evaluate themselves and tap into their gentle nature, since being male is not synonymous with violence or cruelty. He also called on society to play its part in eliminating the social ill and thanked the board and management of GNNL for joining the campaign. Paul McAdam for InfoHub. Delicia Haynes tells us that the 12-member trade mission from Guadeloupe and Martinique are examining local potential business prospects. According to Ghana Honorary Consul to French Ghana, Travis Tracy Lacant, the group is here on invitation by Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu. I did extend an invitation to them to, to come to Guyana and uh, explore trade and tourism and cultural uh, opportunities for us to develop our relations. Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu also disclosed that the trade mission wants to develop trade partnerships with local lumber dealers. He noted that this is a good opportunity for local businesses to establish business ties with their overseas counterparts. They're looking for um, having a relationship with people who deal with lumber so they can buy wood and ship them back. The head of the trade mission delegation shared that the team is elated to be in Guyana, adding that most of what they have seen is impressive. Guyana's honorary consul to French Guyana, Travis Tracy Lacant, said that the trip was very well coordinated with the help of the Guyana Office for Investment Go Invest. The team departs Guyana on December 5. For Info Hub, Delicia Haynes. Minister of Telecommunication Catherine Hughes has observed that today's youths are being offered better opportunities to prepare them for leadership roles. Alexis Rodney brings us that report. The minister was speaking to InfoHub following the graduation of some 74 youth from the Module 2 Youth Leadership Training Program at the Madawini Training Center on Sunday. The training was overseen by the Office of the Presidential Advisor on Youth Empowerment. I found that um, all the events in the program, the cultural talent, the discussion, everything was a, to a very high standard. I love the fact that I shared with them that the young people today are able to get a taste. Um, you know, they do parliamentary debates, they know how the parliamentary system works. And I was lamenting the fact that the first time I went into the parliament was when I was actually becoming an MP. So I'm excited that young people today are far better prepared than we were in my day. Presidential Advisor on Youth and Parliament, Aubrey Northen, explained that the second module was focused on training in critical thinking and analysis and also included a component to solve problems and prepare written reports. The sole purpose of it is one, to teach them to debate and to produce new ideas so that when the youth policy has to be revised, you're getting it from youths across the country because 
all these young people come from all 10 administrative regions and so they bring a variety of views, cultures, background. The training program was comprised of a six-part module one and a three-part module two. Norton said the government hopes to develop a module three which will specialize in addressing youth problems through empowerment. Alexis Rodney for InfoHub. Another 23 adolescent mothers have benefited from child and elderly care as well as first aid training under the Comprehensive Empowerment Program. The program, which falls under the auspices of Women Across Differences, WAD, held its seventh graduation exercise on Friday at the Umaniana. Addressing the graduates, First Lady Mrs. Sandra Granger encouraged them to put their newly acquired skills to good use. This program has proven that there are second chances. It has helped you, the participants, to understand the risks you may face with repeat pregnancies. It has taught you to nurture and care for your baby and yourself. It has encouraged you to ask questions about the things you may not understand until you get the answers you seek. It has made you positive about yourselves as a viable human being capable of contributing to our society. Coordinator of WAD, Colonel Samuels Boston, explained that the program, which began in 2008, is designed to provide the adolescent mothers with life skills that would result in their personal and socioeconomic development. Our intention was to provide the girls with a second chance given their socioeconomic circumstances, which hinge on sexual abuse, poverty, lack of parental support guidance, and societal culture, which discriminates against this group. Since its inception, the program has benefited more than 475 adolescent mothers. WAD is a network of women committed to serving individuals and vulnerable groups through education, empowerment, and advocacy in order to promote social change. The curtains came down on the 57th National Schools Championship last Friday as District 10 retained the title as champions. Paul McAdam has our final report. The event, which was held at the Lenora Track and Field Facility, featured six days of intense competitions between 15 districts. District 10, comprising Upper Lemerara Kokwani, topped the competition. District 13, South Georgetown, was second. And District 11, North Georgetown, third. Minister of State Joseph Harmon, making brief remarks, reminded athletes that they represent the country's future. He assured the athletes that more efforts will be made to further improve the facility. And I trust that next year when you come again, that we'll have better facilities there for you. We'll have more stands. We'll have more eating facilities and so on here on the ground. I've already had some words with the manager here, Mr. Williams, and Christopher Jones, and Minister Norton, and indicated to them that the open spaces that are here should be fixed, and they should add to the facilities that we have here. Chief Education Officer Marcel Hudson, in his commendation to the athletes, observed that the event began and ended with as much success as was anticipated. We are really thankful to you for providing us with some very exciting and glorious moments. I congratulate the winners and the participants both because these parts make a whole. Sports events such as this are meant to showcase the collective talent of our young people rather than only recognizing winners. And this is what it did today. President of the Ghana Teachers Union, Mark Light, described the championship as one with a difference. He also noted that at both the regional and national levels, it is important that athletes are provided with the right facilities. Paul McCallum for InfoHub. That's InfoHub for today, but before we go, we encourage you to pick up a copy of our budget bulletin from a newsstand nearest to you. Or read a digital copy on our website where you can also follow us for more news there and on social media. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Do you know what the national budget is? The national budget is a public record of the government's financial plans. It identifies financial goals of the government and the amount of money needed to achieve those goals during a 12-month period. The national budget also tells the story of how the country's resources are being used and whether our decision makers are securing a good future for all citizens. It also reveals what the government sees as priority. As citizens, you may or may not agree with those priorities, 
but understanding what government's decisions and plans are for the year ahead will allow you to ask questions and hold the government accountable, as is your duty. The budget is everyone's business. Get involved now. A message from the Ministry of Finance.